Baseball in the Boroughs, presented by Verizon. The Mets and Yankees both head into all-star break in playoff position in the National and American League, respectively. But the teams, they're heading into the break with very different vibes. The Mets, they've won five out of their last six games, while the Yankees, over a much larger sample size, have lost 19 of their last 28 games. So let's evaluate the first half for both teams. We're going to do it with a host and producer at WFAN, my guy Pete Hoffman, who joins me now. Pete, what's going on? I'm good, Dex. I'm just so happy the first half of the season is over. We've had too much ups and downs, man. Yeah, too many ups and downs. You'll hear me say this quite a few times. I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks. It's been a roller coaster ride with these teams. As you know, the fans know, you hear them call on the fan all the time about what this season has been like thus far. But let's start with this. I want to talk to you about the most valuable players on both of these teams. So let's go with the Yankees first, who they're second in the AL East at the break. Who's been their most valuable player this season so far? I feel like it might be an obvious answer, but maybe you have a surprise for me. So tell me, who's been the first-half MVP for the Bronx Bombers? I mean, it would be easy to say a guy like Aaron Judge, but I'm not going to take the easy route. I have to go Luis Heal, somebody that I was a little critical of to start the season, but he really turned it on, and he replaced the Garrett Cole uh, injury. When, when Garrett Cole was missing from the Yankees for the first couple of months of the season. Luis Heal held it down, was looking like the future Cy Young of this team. I mean, every start, it looked like he was putting up numbers. He leads, the, he's top 15 in ERA, top 15 in strikeouts, top 15 in whip. The guy has been consistent. I know that they have slid lately, but the reason for their early success was because Luis Heal took the ball was a was a warrior on the mound and basically acted like Garrett Cole for the first part of the season for the New York Yankees. No, that's a good answer. I think a lot of people would probably go with Judge thinking the offense, but you're right. Luis Hill, he held it down for that pitching rotation, was pitching like an ace, like you said. So you got to like what you saw from Luis Hill. I think that's a fair answer. Now, with the Mets, I think there's quite a few players who are in the conversation for first half MVP, especially, Pete, considering where this team was, 11 games below 500 at the end of May, and now to be sitting in the third wild card spot in the NL. Who's the real first half most valuable player for the Amazons in your eyes? No one's going to believe it, but it's Mark Vientos. Since he took over the third base every single game, since Brett Beatty basically got sent back to the minors, the team is 27 and 12. That's because Mark Vientos is a threat in the in the lineup. He is a def he's defensively improved. Which, by the way, got to give tip the cap to Francisco Lador for starting the season with Mark Vientos. It, before spring training even began, the two of them were out there taking defensive to, together, trying to work on his skill set. So he looks like an actual third baseman. And in the lineup, I mean, the guy, it, it, he's got 12 home runs on the season. He hasn't even put up enough numbers. He hasn't played enough games to register an official, a, you know, MVP votes or, or whatever. But he, since he came in for 38 games, he has made a significant difference. And the team has taken a complete jump as soon as he got to the lineup every day. No doubt about that. All right, Mark Vientos is team MVP for the first half for the Mets. Let's get back to the roller coaster because we talked about this. Been a roller coaster ride this season for both teams. Now, the Yankees, to start with them on this portion, they won 50 of their first 72 games and they lost 19 out of their last 28 games. But it's still just a game out of first in the AL East behind the Orioles. So I'm going to do this here, Pete. I'm going to call you Professor Pete. Professor Pete Hoffman, what's your first half grade for the Yanks? Well, first time, first time and last time I'll be able to be called a professor. <laughs> but that being, said, that being said, B minus for the Yankees. And this is why, Dex. They are so lopsided. If it's not for Aaron Judge, if it's not for Juan Soto, the team cannot win ball games. If it's, if it's not Luis Hill pitching, you got Carlos Rodon who's struggling. And the team early on really showed that they can't come up clutch. They don't have that clutch gene. And I've realized they're kind of played bully ball the first few months where they felt like, oh, well, we're the best team in the league because we're winning games. We're, we're, we're riding on Judge and Soto's shoulders. But the reality is the last half of the season, the first, 
the last couple few weeks of the struggle is more of who they are. They're not scoring runs. They're, they're getting. Remember when they got shut out five times in the first month? That's who they are. They don't get hits. They don't get timely hits. And unfortunately, you put that on with a trouble starting pitching with Carlos Rodon going back to his, his, his awful self and a bullpen with Clay Holmes you cannot rely on in the ninth inning. It's just a lot to be desired with this New York Yankees squad. Yeah. All right, so B minus is your grade for the Yankees in the first half. Now, on the Mets side of things, arguably an even crazier roller coaster ride for the Mets, who, as I mentioned, they look dead in the water at the end of May. They're now 49 and 46 at the break. It's an incredible turnaround. So, what grade are you giving the Mets for their first half performance, and why? I have to give a B, and and it's because of the fight that this team showed. They could have easily just packed it up early on and said, you know what, this season's not going the way we want to. Let's just play the season out. We'll all get traded. We'll all go to different, uh, you know, playoff contenders. And who cares about the season? But Carlos Mendoza has gotten this team together. Francisco Lador, who everyone has criticized from the, the beginning of the season, who started terrible. Don't get me wrong. He had a terrible start to the season, but has taken this team and, and has put the team on his back, along with guys like Mark Vientos, Brandon Nimmo, and this they're showing how much fight they have. I love that. That is something where the way they finished, yeah, they lost the last game of the season to Colorado. So be it. It is what it is. But they are proving they're going to be a powerhouse. They're going to be buyers. All they have to do is fix the bullpen. Once the bullpen's fixed, Everything else is going to be amazing. So right now there are B trending upwards. All right, B trending upwards. Sounds to me like you're feeling better about the Mets. So you said trending upward than you are about the Yankees. You gave them a B minus, and they're trending downwards with how many games they've lost in the last 28, being 19. But we'll see. First half, Pete and I agree. It's been a roller coaster ride if you are a fan of both teams. That is my guy, Pete Hoffman. Check him out on WFAN hosting, also producing as well. Pete. Enjoy the All-Star break. Good to talk some baseball with you. Thank you, my friend. Thanks, Tex. Appreciate it as always, man.